Hey everyone, I'm very excited to be doing this segment for you. It is on inhalation burns of the upper airway and how to manage them. Now, this is one of my favorite topics and as a little bit of a side, I was a second day attending when a first 26-year-old patient came into the emergency department with this type of injury, respiratory distress, strider, Ultimately, I had to perform a surgical airway because I wasn't able to intubate the patient. And since then, because we're a major burn center, I have done a lot of these airways. I've intubated multiple times with inhalation burns, and I've learned a little bit about this specific scenario and how to manage them effectively. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna cover all of those clinical pearls about airway management of the upper airway inhalation burn. We're gonna go through some specific tools that I like to use, uh, and we're gonna go through all of them here and discuss which I think is best. All right, before we get into some of the tools of the trade and tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you, let's talk about some of the challenges you can expect with this type of upper airway inhalation injury. Now, injuries to this type of patient is usually an upper airway and anatomic issue because of what the burn in the smoke does to the upper airway. And the first challenge you're gonna face is just the burns to the face themselves. So if you have significant burns to the face, particularly around the periorbital area, that can actually cause restriction of mouth opening and in severe enough cases you may have to perform lateral escharotomies at the side of the mouth to be able to open up this space enough to be able to actually intubate the patient. That's number one. Number two is, as you can see on this uh, uh, mannequin, is that there's a lot of soot and carbonaceous sputum, and that's gonna be throughout the airway. So what's gonna happen with all of that carbonaceous sputum and soot is that it's gonna coat all of the structures inside the oropharynx, and oftentimes you can get in there, and what used to be nice differentiated pink tissue with white cords is all just a mass of spotted gray and black and pale white color. And it can be very difficult to identify the anatomic landmarks in a, as you would in a normal patient. All right, and number three, one of the biggest issues is that because there's such efficient gas exchange in this upper part of the airway is that that also means that a lot of heat and a lot of soot is gonna get in there and it's gonna cause irritation and edema to the area. And so all of those landmarks, the posterior oropharynx, the epiglottis, the retinoids, even the cords themselves and all the area epiglottic folds, all that area is gonna be edematous, swole, swollen, very friable tissue. And so uh, because of that, it's gonna be difficult to differentiate your landmarks, it's gonna be difficult to get tracheal access, and on top of that, because it's so edematous and friable, all it takes is a little bit of a touch for it to blossom up into blood and bleeding, and now you have blood and edema on top of everything you had beforehand, and then that airway can rapidly deteriorate and become a real mess. And so really in these patients, you really have one shot at it before things get bad in there. So the the goal is to optimize your success, and we're going to talk about that in the next section. All right, let's get into it a little bit and talk about what I think is the optimal way to intubate these patients. So as I said before, there's a lot of edema, there's a lot of potential airway obstruction, uh, and the, the, pa the space that you have to be able to access the trachea, it can often be very narrow. The tissue can be very friable, and so I think uh, the most delicate approach is probably the best approach. And so what I like to use is some kind of tube introducer, and we'll go into some of that, uh, what I used to do, and now what I like, the new tool that I like to use a little bit later on, but what I, what I have done for many years, what I used to do, particularly if I don't have my new uh, next generation articulating uh, tube introducer, is uh, a preloaded bougie preloaded tube with a bougie like this, uh, with a little bit of a bend to it. Uh, and I think with these patients, because you're trying to be delicate and you're trying not to really force or move the tissue around uh, too roughly, uh, video laryngoscopy is always the best choice. So in this, uh, in this scenario here, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a standard geometry blade on our glide scope here, uh, a MAC-3, and I'm gonna use my preloaded bougie, all right? So I'm gonna go in. Distracting open the jaw, and as you can see, even on this mannequin, it's designed to be very restricted with its mouth opening, very difficult to open up the mouth entirely. I'm gonna come in, 
There I see my uvula. I'm gonna work slowly to get my view. Now I have probably the best view that I'm going to get. I'm going to go ahead and look in the mouth, slide that bougie around the tube, slide it under, and advance. All right, once the tube is in place, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bougie, inflate my cuff, and ventilate my patient. All right, so as you can see there with this mannequin, all of that distorted anatomy, swollen epiglottis, narrow opening makes this very, very difficult. And the tube introducer, the bougie, really allows you almost like a Seldinger technique to sort of wiggle your way past those tight cords and into the, spa into the tracheal space. So that's option number one, and this uh, has been my go-to technique for quite a while. In the next section, we're going to use a couple of different tools and uh, show you what I'm doing now and uh, some of the other tools that I like in the future that, other, that are other options that people might want to use. All right, everyone, welcome back. In this section, we're gonna go through what is now my optimal go-to technique. Uh, before, as we talked about, I used to use this preloaded bougie, using the bougie as kind of a Seldinger technique to get past swollen edematous cords. And I love this technique, but you really only can use it with a VL, you can use it with DL, VL standard geometry blade. And uh, sometimes with very difficult airways, particularly ones like this, where you have restricted mouth opening, uh, uh, or the air Airway is very swollen anterior and you don't want to push away a lot of tissue. You just want to be able to look up and around that primary curve delicately to be able to look up at the glottic opening with a hyperangulated blade. You can't do that with a bougie because you really can't get enough bend into that bougie to be able to navigate that primary curve. But Recently on the market, there have been some new tools like this one here. These are articulating bougies or articulating tube introducers. This one is through, from Through the Cords. It's the total control introducer. Uh, it's my favorite go-to device. Uh, and I like to use it on these patients uh, because what it allows me to use, do is use a hyperangulated blade because of the way that the articulation is here. But because it has the ability to move up and down, I can then navigate this bougie delicately through those swollen cords without having to bang into any tissue at all. It allows me to navigate along the hyperangulated blade to the glottic opening, and then it also allows me to then drop this and navigate down the secondary curve of the trachea, like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and take my hyperangulated blade here from my GlideScope. I'm gonna insert it midline can see now on the screen uvula pointing my way to the epiglottis. I'm going to walk my way down until I see the tip of the epiglottis come into view. Now I'm going to optimize my view. And there I have probably my best view. I'm going to go ahead and pull the lever and straighten this and allow myself to go in, guiding myself now down to the glottic opening, and once I'm there, I can release up into the glottic opening. And now once I'm there, instead of banging into the anterior trachea like I would with a typical bougie, I can then squeeze the lever again and travel without any resistance down into the trachea until I'm in the green zone and I know where I need to be. I can release this off to the side, and then I can deliver this tube. Remove this just like I would any other bougie. Inflate the cuff, and then go ahead and ventilate my patient. And as you can see, this technique really is, allows me to fine tune this technique of tracheal access without banging into any of that swollen, friable, edematous tissue. And I think it's what's gonna probably give you the best first pass success, a hyperangulated blade with an articulating bougie. All right, 
The other variation on the VL tube introducer technique is using an integrated airway management system like the GlideScope, the Core 15 we have here, which allows you to have not only standard geometry VL, hyperangulated VL, but also fiber optic devices and you can flip seamlessly between one or the other or even have picture in picture so that you can do this what we call a, a video assisted fiber optic intubation. And so as you can see here, I've got a GlideScope B-Flex with a tube loaded on here and I'm ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get my best view. All right, now I've got my view. The only drawback to this technique is that now I need to have an assistant come and hold this video laryngoscope for me with this view. So Kyle, why don't you come in and give me a hand? So you're going to take this from me and you're going to try to keep this in the top 50% of the screen. Right here. Yep, that's good. Try to give me a little bit more view of the cords if you can. Lift up just a little more. Good. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert the fiber optic device and travel down until it comes into view. You pull up just a little bit. And I'm going to go into the space press down, travel into the trachea, and I know I'm in the trachea even though my view isn't so great on the left. I've got a great view of the tracheal rings on the right, and now I can go ahead and deliver this tube. Remove the fiber optic bronchoscope. Inflate my cuff. And ventilate my patient. And you can see here that this integrated VL assisted fiber optic works great for this patient. Now I should note that I tried to intubate with a fiber optic device alone but because this airway is so floppy and lies down on the posterior oropharynx, uh, it does, it's, the, the mannequin didn't allow me to get this in without it but you, can, you could potentially with the right airway just use fiber optic alone for these patients as well and I think that would be just as good a technique that would allow for minimal uh, damage or uh, manipulation of the oropharyngeal tissue. So that's it. We've covered all the important topics and points about managing an upper airway inhalation burn. Remember that most of these patients are going to have challenging anatomy. They're going to have burns to the face, which is going to cause restriction of the mouth opening. They're going to have a lot of carbonaceous sputum in their mouth, which is going to efface all of the anatomic landmarks and make them difficult to identify. On top of it, you're going to have all of this edema and swelling of the airway, which is not only going to distort your anatomy, but also make it very, very difficult to pass through those edematous narrow cords. And touching any of that uh, friable edematous soft tissue is going to cause them to expand, to swell, to bleed, and make the airway even more difficult. So that's why we went through several techniques that use a video laryngoscope and some kind of tube introducer to be able to use almost a Seldinger technique to get past the cords with minimal manipulation of the tissue to allow you to slide the tube gently into place. Uh, and as I've seen many times with these patients, once those cords get swollen almost completely shut, you may be able to slide a lubed bougie through there, but if you try to slide a tube with a stylet in there, you're not going to be able to get it into place. So let's just quickly review some of the techniques that we used. So the first one was using a standard bougie. I like to preload my tube on the bougie, so a degrip bougie with a VL standard geometry blade. And as we could see, that that was a very successful technique and allowed me to get into the tracheal space quite easily. The second technique we used was using a articulating bougie, a next generation device like the Total Control Introducer that allows me to use the articulating bougie to access around the primary curve and then down into the secondary curve. And what that does is it allows me even more fine motor control to not touch any of the tissue and selding error that swollen trachea that I need to get into. Uh, and it also allowed for me to use a hyperangulated blade if I wanted to which you can't really do with a bougie. 
And then finally, the third technique that we used was with our GlideScope core, which now is an integrated airway management system that allows me to have not only a standard geometry blade, but a hyperangulated blade and a bronchoscope all in one device. Allows me to use picture in picture. So I could just use a fiber optic device uh, in, in an instance if I wanted to as another tube introducer to Seldinger into the tracheal space. Or uh, I could use what I did here, which is a video assisted fiber optic picture in picture screen. So that allowed me to take the standard geometry blade to get the view I wanted and then use the bronchoscope uh, as a tube introducer to get the tube into place. And that also worked successfully. All right. That's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, go ahead and don't re remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and then follow us on theprotectedairway.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side of this video.